So I've got an old Amiga 500, um, which isn't in a brilliant state. It's got the yellow in on the case and everything. Uh, but on eBay, I bought some RAM chips, another 512K of RAM, because on the system board, there's space to put the chips directly on the system board. Most Amiga 500s had an extra 512K added as an expansion card, which fits in the bottom of the, of the uh, machine. And the advantage of that is you can switch on and off for compatibility with some software. Uh, but as the uh, the system board's got space for 512K of RAM, which is four of these chips, which I think are 514256 is the part numbers for them. I got them off eBay for uh, four chips cost about eight pounds, uh, and I've got four twenty pin sockets as well uh, because if I've got to put chips on, I might as well put them in sockets just in case I need to re uh, remove them again at any time. Um, and four of those sockets cost, cost less than a pound, so for less than ten pounds, hopefully adding an extra half a megabyte of RAM to this Amiga five hundred. After reading some articles online. It looks like uh, revision 6A boards and above are the ones where you can expand the memory uh, because they have the Fat Angus chip which can address uh, one megabyte of uh, on-board on memory. So I'm running off of the composite output of the Mega at the minute, uh, which is why it's a black and white image. Uh, and I've boosted it up into Workbench and it's, it reports after Workbench has taken uh, some of the memory at the top of the screen it re reports um, 362k of uh, RAM free. So after I've installed the chips that should go up by about 500 so about 862k I'm expecting after I've installed the memory and uh, I'm booted into Workbench again. So I've already taken the screws out of the bottom of the case so the top of the case will just lift off. I can put that to one side for now. Uh, and the keyboard just rests on here um, and you just uh, pull out the connector there and you can lift the keyboard off that's nice and easy okay so i've just uh, taken out the four screws which hold the rf shield in uh, and tags i've already bent upwards uh, there so this should lift out reasonably easily And that leaves access to the board and so the memory is down in this area of the board so you've got the four chips which give you 512k and you can see in between there's space for four more which is the chips which i've purchased which i should uh, give me space for one megabyte and as you can see on the silk screen it says 512k stroke one megabyte of ram so to get the system board out i need to take out i take off the disk drive so you just pull off the power connector and the actual ribbon cable from the system board and then there's a screw to loosen here and then there's three more screws to, un to take off from below so underneath I have to take uh, out a screw from here uh, that one there uh, and that one there and then the disk drive will uh, come off from the top so now all that holds the PCB in is a little tag here so you probably want to be careful when uh, when levering that to get the PCB out um, but if you just leave it up a bit and then the PCB comes out it's a bit tricky on on the on the back I think you need to bring the RF shield with it uh, but it lifts out with the RF shield and then the RF shield can be removed from from the PCB the PCB is held into the RF shield with all of these uh, little uh, bolt uh, holders on the back so you need to take all of those off from along the back uh, and then remove the PCB from the RF shield. So these are the sockets for the RAM chips um, and they need decoupling capacitors as well. Uh, so I'm going to try and because the, the holes are filled with solder as you can see there from I guess from the wave sold, flow soldering um, process that assembled the boards so I'm going to try and add a bit of solder and then just use my cheap solder sucker to try and clear those holes out. And if I can do that, then uh, I'll put the sockets in. Uh, but if the cheap solder sucker doesn't uh, work, then I'll use my bigger solder sucker. So I've uh, gone through a few of these holes uh, with this cheap solder sucker and it seems to remove the solder reasonably well. Like that. The... Um ground planes are the hardest to clear the holes of. But 
but what I'll do is I'll do them off camera because it's hard to do it on camera uh, and then come back okay so I managed to clear out all the holes what I needed to do was put some flux on the top and then it sold the solder sucked out uh, really easy uh, the only place where I didn't is on these bypass capacitors or the um, one of the holes uh, was no problem to solder suck but the other ones in this ground plane and it's straight onto the ground plane it takes a lot of heat to to clear that and I haven't managed to do that I've got more powerful soldering on which I could use but what I'll do is I'll try it without those bypass capacitors for these particular chips because it's got other capacitors for the other chips very close so hopefully it should be okay uh, if there is an issue um, running programs then what I'll do is I'll come back and use a hotter soldering iron to desolder those holes uh, but with these um, all I've done is drop a socket into each one of these just to make sure that the holes are completely clear um, and so they are so what I'll do is I'll turn the board over and then I'll put the sockets in and I'll come back and uh, solder them in so I've placed the sockets in and I bend over the two corner pins uh, as a lot of people do and I just um, first of all I, I just put a bit of solder on onto both those corners and I just put my finger underneath and reflow the solder just to make sure that the socket is uh, is flush to the board and I go around and do the other pins so I'll do that and uh, then come back again okay so the sockets are soldered in um, I'll come back for the bike bypass capacitors if needed I'll turn the board over and put the chips in okay, so there are sockets in in the board uh, I've got the chips here uh, and they should be hopefully the right part number uh, I didn't check the speed because they're more modern chips so in theory they should be faster and should be okay, should be okay but anyway if I've got the speed wrong then I, at least being socketed I can take them out again or if they don't work for whatever reason or if, if I've got faulty chips then, uh, then I can always take them out but I'll put them in like that and I'll reassemble the computer and see if it reads as being one megabyte installed. So a couple of other things that need uh, to be done is this Fat Agnes chip here needs to be a certain revision on this uh, revision 6A board that I've got here. The chip seems to be the right chip to run one megabyte of RAM. Uh, and also this JP2, um, there's a little link between the bottom two pins that needs to be cut uh, and it needs to be bridged between the top two pins to turn it into a one meg board. So Amiga Workbench now reports 885k of memory uh, available, so the one meg on the system board has, uh, has worked.